Sophia Valdez and the Vanishing Boat by Andrea Beatty. Chapter 1. Sophia rushed around the house looking for her red shoe. Please hurry, Abuelo. I can't be late today, she said. Abuelo calmly looked up from the lunch he was packing. Sophia, do I ever make you late to school? He asked, raising his left eyebrow just so. It was Abuelo's, why don't you think about that for a moment look. Abuelo had a look for every situation, and Sophia knew them all by heart. They were always kind, but they got their message through. Abuelo didn't have to say a lot to say a lot. I know, said Sophia, but I really can't be late today. Miss Greer has a surprise for us. Abuelo smiled at his granddaughter. Here's a surprise. Your shoe is under the couch. I should have known, said Sophia, looking at Pup. Pup barked and wagged his tail. He fetched his leash and ran to the door. He was ready to go. A few minutes later, they were on their way. Sophia, Abuelo, and Pup walked to Blue River Creek Elementary School together every day. Today, Sophia couldn't stop wondering about the surprise her teacher, Miss Lila Greer, had in store for her second grade class. Maybe it's a field trip, said Sophia. The last one was so exciting. The bridge collapsed and Miss Greer got stuck on an island. Then Iggy showed us how to make a new bridge with shoelaces and fruit roll-ups. It was cool. Miss Greer said that it was a learning experience. That's for sure, said Abuelo. Maybe it's an experiment, said Sophia. Last time, Ada taught us about chemistry and how to make rainbow geysers. I don't think Miss Greer liked the mess, but she said it was a learning experience too. That would be one, Abuelo said with a chuckle. Sophia thought a moment. We sure have a lot of learning experiences in second grade, she said. You surely do, said Abuelo. They reached the school and Sophia scratched Pup's ear. Abuelo handed her the lunch bag. Extra cookies he today, he said, for sharing. Abuelo always packed extra cookies for sharing. It was one of the things Sophia loved about him. It was one of the things her friends loved too. Abuelo was the best baker in Blue River Creek. For years, his bakery, La Panaderia de la Mang Magnolia, was the most popular place in town for people to gather for coffee and cookies and Mexican sweetbreads. He was famous for his pan dulce. Abuelo was retired now, but he still baked for Sofia and her friends and anyone else who might need a treat. He was kind like that. Te amo, Sofia said. Mi vida, said Abuelo, hugging her tight. Sofia hugged him, then she ran through the open school door, ready for the big surprise. Chapter 2 What do you think the surprise will be? asked Rosie Revere, who sat next to Sofia. I hope we're engineering again. That was so much fun. But I don't think Miss Greer liked it when we made inventions and the log scooter knocked Iggy's apartment building slash airplane into the ant farm. What did she call it when we were trying to catch the ants? A learning experience, said Ada, plopping down next to them. She says that a lot. Do you think that's a good thing? Before Sophia could answer, Miss Greer entered the classroom. Good morning, she said. As you know, I have a surprise announcement for you. Miss Greer silently waited for all of her students to look at her. That was how she got their attention without a lot of fuss. It worked. Within seconds, everyone was sitting quietly with their mouths closed and their eyes open. Thank you, class, said Miss Greer. As you know, second grade is a time for new experiences and responsibilities. She paused and looked at the students seriously. I believe that you are ready for a very big responsibility. Like a chore? Someone asked. Yes, but a good one, said Miss Greer. I think we should get a class pet. The class cheered. We will raise money to buy the pet and feed it. Everyone will take turns caring for the pet, so it will be a big responsibility. What kind should we get? She said. Immediately, the class erupted with ideas. A pony, a buffalo, a giraffe. Oh, Miss Greer said, hmm, well, a boa constrictor, hot dogs, a giant squid. A giant one? Miss Greer asked. She looked worried. A killer shark. Miss Green looked a little dizzy and started to sway. The last time she looked like that was when she fainted on the island during our field trip. Are you okay, Miss Greer? asked Itagi. Oh dear, said Miss Greer, imagining giant squids and killer sharks eating hot dogs in her classroom. Killer squids and giant sharks, she mumbled. We could get a small one, said Rosie. A small shark? asked Miss Greer. No, said Rosie, a small pet. Miss Greer perked up. 
That's a good idea, she said, pointing, pointing to a low bookcase by the window. The pet's home will be on top of that bookcase, so no giant squids. Aw, oh, rats, said someone in the back. Rats? said Miss Greer with her eyes wide open. Oh, double deer, no rats. A yeti. It has to be small, said Miss Greer. A small yeti. Oh, triple deer, said Miss Greer, plopping into her seat. I thought this would be easy. Maybe we're not ready to choose a pet. We can do it, said Rosie, but everyone wants a different thing, said Miss Greer. How can we possibly pick one good pet for a class of 17 different students? Sophia Valdez jumped to her feet. I know, she cried. Everyone turned to look at Sophia. They all leaned towards her, and she leaned back just a bit. She felt nervous. Then she remembered the time she went to City Hall and had to be brave and talk to the mayor and the whole city government and ask them to build a park. That had been very scary. She looked at the smiling faces of her friends in grade two and at her slightly worried teacher. This was not so scary. Sophia smiled and raised her head high. I know how to do it, she repeated. Let's have an election. Miss Greer clapped her hands. What a perfect idea. Everyone go home tonight and make a poster for the pet you would like to nominate. Remember, it has to fit on the bookcase. The class cheered. Tomorrow, we'll vote, said Miss Greer. An election is the perfect way to decide. There's nothing complicated about that. It will be easy. After school, Sophia met Abuelo and Pup by the flagpole. All around them, students were talking about the election and the pets they would nominate. Sophia hugged Abuelo, and they walked home together quietly. Sophia was deep in thought. Something was bugging her. What's wrong, Sophia? asked Abuelo. You haven't said a single word since we left school. Did something happen? We're going to elect a class pet, said Sophia. That sounds like a good thing, said Abuelo. Aren't you happy? Sophia thought for a moment. I am, she said, but Miss Greer said something else. She said it would be easy. You've told me lots of stories about elections that were really hard. Abuelo pulled a cookie from his pocket and gave it to Sophia. He pulled out another and sneaked a pinch to Pup. I've seen a lot of elections in my time, said Abuelo, and I've never seen an easy one, but that's okay. Important things are worth the hard work. Sophia frowned. I think, she said, this might be what Miss Greer calls a, lear a real learning experience. Maybe, said Abuelo, but maybe it will turn out like this batch of cookies. What do you mean, asked Sophia. Maybe, said Abuela with a grin, it will be a good one.